Oh, it's my last page. Shoot, I didn't realize. I've been getting a lot of questions about my sketches and how do I sketch the way I do and why do my sketches look so good and <laughs> while I can't speak for the quality of my sketches, I can tell you exactly how I do it. For the purposes of this video, I've broken my sketching process down into about five steps and I'm gonna go through them each individually so you can get a grasp of what they each are. And then I'll sketch a little something for you from start to finish and show you how each of these steps are incorporated into a finished sketch. So let's start with the first step, which happens to be starting strong and building your foundation. One is you need to be able to draw lightly. So if you need, you can practice trying to draw light lines. We wanna make sure we're not using our full pressure from our wrist. Not only will that injure you over time, but it's going to make it difficult to build upon your sketch and to carve it into the way that you want it to look. One way you can see if you're doing it right is start by pushing as hard as you can and then slowly get lighter and see just how light you can get that pencil to go. We wanna start at around this range. <laughs> Basically you want like the weight of the pencil to be drawing and you just wanna be able to control where those lines go. The other part of this step is being very soft with your lines. So when we're drawing a circle, I've seen a lot of people do like these. So they like, they're worried about getting the circle right. So they keep picking up the pencil, they check out, see how round their circle's going, they pick it up again, put it down. And then they're like, oh, how's that? And then they, you know, they keep checking to make sure they're doing the perfect circle. And in doing that, they get this weird kind of hairy looking circle. Um, when I draw a circle, I like to be very soft with it. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a bunch of circles until I get one that looks pretty circular, you know? If you're worried about drawing each shape perfectly, like a square, so if we're like drawing, we're like, oh, but they all have to be the exact same length. Uh, and then you're like measuring them. And then you're like, okay, here we go. Here we have a square. I just want you to get a square shape out there. It doesn't need to be a perfect square. Not for the beginning stages of a sketch anyway. Which brings me to step two of my sketching process. Draw the extra bits. <laughs> so in my circle up here, I have all these extra lines. Really don't wanna be afraid about drawing too many lines, especially if we're drawing very lightly because you can always build up and the lighter you draw, the easier it is to erase things. I like to go over a lot of spots a lot just because I enjoy that texture. And the more lines you use in that beginning sketching steps, it's gonna be a lot easier to create looser and more fluid characters and poses. So like, see how that circle, there's a bit of like motion to it because it has all those extra lines. It almost looks like it's moving. Whereas if we drew just a circle, that it's just a circle. Even if I add some lines to that, maybe it looks a little rounder now, but it's still, just a circle. Whereas this one, I feel like it just has some extra bounce to it. And that's my favorite thing about sketches is just how fluid and expressive they can be. And they're not perfect. And that's what I like about them. <laughs> Step three is to pick the best lines. So because we're being so soft and fluid and expressive with our lines, we have all these extra bits, right? Some of these lines don't look like a perfect circle, but some of them kind of do. So step three is to pick your favorite lines and darken them. Because we've built that foundation, we can kind of see what's circular and what's not. And these lines are foundational lines as well. So we don't need to darken those. And it's best to use those to like figure out where eyes are and things like that. But when it comes to darkening your lines and picking your favorite lines, you don't need to darken those because those are gonna slowly kind of get lost in the sketch especially when you start building up like for an eye. And having all those different lines gives you a lot of options to pick from. Step four is to add depth and tone. So if I were to draw two shapes here, maybe like a circle and a square on top of it, and then I do step three, which is pick my favorite lines. Now I have the ability to add that depth and that tone. And kind of a general rule for me is I like to darken lines that have something behind it. This adds a little bit of depth to it. So I would like darken and widen up this line. Already you can see it makes it look like that square is further behind the circle. It shapes on a different plane. And then another thing I like to do is to add some cross hatching to a sketch. I'll usually do this throughout the sketching process. Um, and you'll figure that out as you go where you like to put these. But 
Again, as a general rule, I like to just shade parts that are further in the background and leave elements that are closer to the viewer lighter. So I'll just add some simple light etching to this back square there. And now it even looks further into the background. And you can even darken it up closer to this edge so it's like it's casting a shadow to further prove that point. Five is erasing all those lines that you don't really need. Sometimes I don't do this because I just kind of enjoy the way a sketch looks. But if you find that some of these lines are distracting, you can just go ahead and erase them like so. I might even add some, uh, some etching to make this look more round. Darken up some of these lines, make it look like there's actually something behind them. But yeah, you can erase any of these lines that you feel like you don't need. Again, I like to leave them, just personal preference. But if you want to clean it up, you have that option too. So that was really messy, kind of like my sketch process. <laughs> Hopefully something made sense. But now I want to try and take all of those little steps and demonstrate how each of these kind of relate to the actual sketching process. So if I wanted to sketch a character, I'm going to start very light, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to use big, soft, loose, and exaggerated shapes. So maybe we're drawing a character with their hand, with their head resting on their, um, hand? Is that, that's not the word, is it? Resting on their, maybe I want to draw a character <laughs> with their head resting, with their chin resting on their, hand, I don't know, resting on their elbow, that sort of thing. So I'm going to be very loose, very light, and very exaggerated. I'm looking for the simple shapes. So like a hand is just a circle with like a bit of a pokey thing coming out of it at this point. Maybe the elbow is coming over here. Feel free to use references if you are having a hard time. I've drawn this pose a lot, so I think I might be able to get it here. Maybe this hand's coming around that way. Draw some um, reference lines here on the face. Figure out which direction the head is looking. We can chisel away a little bit. And then if I want any hair, I'll do like big shapes for that as well. Just kind of trying to get a vague idea of where everything is going to be laid out on the page. So that was step one. You'll notice I'm not worried about getting any of the shapes to be perfect. And I'm being very loose and I'm actually rarely picking up the pencil, to be honest. I like to have a lot of extra lines to play with for the next step. Get an idea. For eyes, I kind of just put lines as a reference to where those are going to be on the face. Same with the mouth and the nose and ears. I like to do a little half circle shape if they're going to be visible. Eyebrows. Maybe she wants to be smiling. Oh, the only thing I haven't really ironed out here is bangs. It'd be fun to follow this shape. Now the cool thing about this stage is it's very easy to erase mistakes. So if I realize that this arm maybe is in the wrong place, I can erase it. But if it only needs to be moved by like a smidge, I'll just redraw it where I want it. And you see how these lines kind of just fade out because I'm darkening up the lines that I like. I'm not a big fan of the bangs, so I can go in and erase those because they're actually really distracting because I think I want to go in a completely different direction. So here I can erase that. Redraw some of the construction lines there so I have an idea of where the head is. Hmm. Kind of think this drawing would be suited better if she was looking upwards like this. Let me try that out. And then turn it so it's looking upwards. Again, using very simple, loose, exaggerated shapes. Yeah, I kind of like that better. <laughs> and you see how I'm using erasing only when it's like completely necessary? So like if I had just drawn these shapes on top of the old ones, there still would have been a lot of lines happening right here. And that would have been very distracting. Whereas with the arm, the old arm was a very good reference point for where I wanted to put the new arm. I knew I wanted it lower and a little bit stiffer. So I was able to leave those lines there and build upon it. And like, I don't really need to erase those. I could erase the old arm at this point, but it's kind of working just fine. Probably wanna like smooth that out a bit. I think these arms kind of the same size and shape. I still need to figure out how this hairline's gonna go. And that's something I need to determine before I start darkening a lot of these lines, because the darker you go, the harder it's going to be to erase your graphite. This is a really good example. If you get to the point where you have 
way too many lines. If you showed it to someone else, they'd be like, oh, look, spaghetti. And if you showed it to yourself, you're like, I'm still not even entirely sure what I drew. That's a good sign that it's time to erase and try again. But because we drew so light, I can lightly erase and we can still see some of those lines and I'm able to use those and know what not to draw, you know? <laughs> I think the problem I'm having here is this line and shape that I used was for the old face direction. So I think I'll give that an erase too. Sometimes I find it helpful to draw a hairline, which again, it's important to draw very light because you don't really want that to show through. And then a part. Now it shouldn't be looking too pretty. The point is to get down all of the elements and make sure that there's room for them on the page and make sure we have a lot of choices when it comes down to detailing this illustration. You don't wanna be afraid to draw too many extra bits. <laughs> now, if you've done step one and step two correctly, you should have a big messy blob, which is exactly what we're going for because now we have all the groundwork down and we can start adding in the details, which to me is my favorite part. <laughs> so we're gonna pick our favorite lines and build upon those lines. You have a lot of options here because it is so sketchy and messy and we can really build up on that. And we can use some more pressure here and darken up some of these lines. I think before I do that, I need to make sure I draw the eyes in here. Should we have a happy little person? Pick where the face is gonna be here. See how I'm ignoring some lines and just picking my favorite? And for the nose, I actually didn't really do a whole lot here. So we can actually start back at the beginning for the nose. Draw lightly, pick the shapes we want. Don't be afraid to draw extra lines here. And then pick our favorites. I'm even gonna add a little shading here and there. I think that just helps it bring a little bit of life in there. I can even add some shading to these if I want to separate them from the rest of the illustration. Really make them pop, which is step four, but like I said, I kind of do that throughout as I see fit or as I feel like it. <laughs> and you can too. The ear. You can define that ear a bit. Now the best way to learn how to draw different facial features is to draw a lot of facial features. So the more you draw, the better at that you're gonna be. But following these steps is definitely gonna help you build upon your sketch and really frees you up to creating more interesting sketches. Now again, in step four was adding depth. One of the places I like to add depth is right under the chin. So I'll just add some uh, shading there. Everyone always tells me that looks like a beard, but <laughs> I don't know, man, I like it. <laughs> Pick our favorite lines here. Another thing about having a lot of sketchy lines underneath is as I move my hand over here, it's going to smudge lines. And the older the lines are, the more smudged they're going to get because they'll have been there underneath the smudge, you know? And that actually helps them blend out a bit as well. And I just, I, I love the texture of sketches in graphite. I like to use a mechanical pencil. This is actually a 0.9 millimeter. I thought it was a 0.7. Maybe I have two different kinds. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I like mechanical pencils because I don't have to stop and, and sharpen them, but any pencil is going to work for you. Trust me. I should probably work on this hair. I want to do these really pretty African braiding. I've got a picture here on Pinterest. I'll have it linked in the description. I'll be trying to use that here so that I can draw a hair that I've never drawn before. Using references is very important, especially when it's something you've never drawn before. But trust me, I still use references for things that I have drawn before. And I like to collect them all on Pinterest. So it looks like they kind of overlap. I might have to do some quick sketching here. Draw some simple sort of noodle shapes and then I can add details onto those. The most important thing to do when you're drawing is to try to break it down into simpler shapes and then add detail into that. So start light. Again, this goes back to <laughs> the tips I suggested, but start light and build up from there. And I think you'll get the best results that way. So it looks like they're twisted. Actually, they're more twisted than that. I might have to add an extra layer of twists. And then I just have to do that for the whole head of hair. And I'll just fill in this small section here because it's kind of too small to add a whole lot of detail. So I'm just gonna fill those two sections in to kind of give the illustration some depth. And here, this is actually a good example of erasing bits 
to help define the sketch like that. Yeah, I think that looks better. But around the hair, I usually like to leave a lot of sketchy bits because it kind of adds a little bit of like frizz and like realism in that way. Now here we have a lot more um, space to fill. So it's more important that these make sense. Be a little creative with it because gravity doesn't exist in my world, apparently. <laughs> Just go down the whole length adding in more detail. All right, now I just need to do that for the rest of these braids. Some of these look more like twists than others, but I'm figuring it out as I go. Some of these braids that are further in the background, I'm gonna shade in a little darker, add some more depth to the hair, and just continue along. Adding detail to the places that don't have it yet. I'm filling in some of those smaller sections that would be really difficult to add too much detail to. Build up a little bit more around the face. Add some shading. It's gonna be a lot easier to shade faces the more um, practice you've done with faces and drawn them in different angles. So next time you're out and about, like look at people, like not in a creepy way, but like pay attention to what parts of faces stick out, what parts of faces sink in. And that's gonna really help you add depth because I like to add a little bit of shading. If you have an idea of where your like sun location is or your light source, you'll know that you wanna shade on one side of the face and knowing that like the brow usually sticks out more than this section here. I don't know if there's a name for the side of your face, but it's there and you could shade that and you'll know <clears throat> which parts like stick out. And references will definitely help you with that. So you can open up Pinterest and take a little look-sees. I just realized <laughs> I didn't draw any hair inside this uh, earring, even though the earring has no solidness to it. It's just a ring. <laughs> so I need to go ahead and do that. I need to follow the same shape here. Now for the hands, I like to do the same thing. I keep the shape real simple. And also look at my own hand. Let me see, wait, I know, be this way. Wait, I need to reenact this. I'm confused with which way the hand's pointed. I think it's like this. Yeah, that makes sense, okay. <laughs> so this is the thumb. Get darken up the good lines. Eyebrows are something I play with like through the whole process of the drawing. Cause I always notice, hmm, that one seems a little low. Hmm, that one seems a little long. And I'm like always tweaking them. If you're doing the same thing, we're in the same boat. <laughs> now this ear is kind of blending in with the hair because there's about a very similar amount of detail to it. So I'm actually gonna try and erase this whole ear, bring out the white values and then re-add the ear details and try to keep them a little bit more simple and less sketchy. So hopefully they'll stick out compared to the hair and then add the earring on top of that. You know, I feel like it's a little bit more visible. You can actually shade behind this head here, add some depth. I realized I didn't give her any clothes. That's kind of awkward. <laughs> I'm gonna give her a bracelet here. This arm feels plain. We can erase some of those distracting lines. We can even widen the line underneath, give it a little bit of depth. But yeah, I need to give her some clothes. <laughs> Here's the tube top. I'm gonna add some shading to that. Like I said, oh, I can even add like a light hatching to the face, add some color to that. Having an idea of where our light source is is gonna help add some more shading here. We can darken up some of the lines that are the furthest from the light source. And just darken up any of our favorite lines to add even more depth to a sketch. Even shade the ends of like strands that are going off into like the distance there. I think I definitely got more of a hang of these braids as I got down here. Whoa, I just realized how shiny that is. 
<laughs> I always forget how shiny graphite is. So that is about how I sketch. That's my process from start to finish. I like to start very light and loose and exaggerated and then slowly build upon that and pick my favorite lines and then add some depth and shading. And, uh, and then I can erase like the lines that are distracting, but I just personally really enjoy a good random sketchy lines that don't really make a whole lot of sense. But if you don't, you can erase those like these. You could go along and erase them all, but I really don't want to, I like them. <laughs> I will erase over here because there's a lot of smudging going on and I think that would look cool. Like the light source is from over here, you know? To kind of show you in comparison what this would look like if I didn't follow my steps. So if I drew really darkly, made sure everything looked perfect from the get-go, didn't build upon lines, it would look more like this. So I would have to, I wouldn't be able to draw any guidelines and you'd have to draw very dark and just immediately draw the lines, you know? Oh shoot, those are too close together. Eyebrows, only the lines that are important here. Oh gosh, <laughs> this is not looking good. Yeah, see, I don't think I need to go any farther. <laughs> Look, see, that doesn't even erase fully. <laughs> don't do that, guys. So yeah, that's my sketch process broken down. If you're having trouble drawing any other elements of the drawing, like in particular, like eyes or noses or mouths or hair or hands or things like that, I do have a video where I go through my process for learning how to draw new elements. Um, so I'll have that linked in the description or up in the card. And that will break down like how I go about learning different elements. So if you're having trouble drawing anything that you want to and it's not really looking the way you're picturing it, that video will definitely be helpful for that. But this was my sketch process, how I build upon and um, add depth to different areas of the sketches and uh, I don't know, make it look the way I make them look, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions and if you followed some of these steps, I'd love to see what you created with that. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye. I wonder if I could add, grab a white gel pen and see what I can do here. Ooh, this wasn't part of the tips, but it looks kind of cool. <laughs> I've never used gel pen straight on graphite before. Not that I can remember, at least. You can just lighten it up in places instead of having to erase. <laughs> yeah, bye!